One of the questions that comes up is, when exactly were the disciples saved? Were they saved before Christ's death on the cross or after? Something that comes up when discussing really John 6 is this issue of when exactly were the disciples saved? Now, as we look at the passage, you might see why this particular issue comes up. So let's go to John 6. Verse 37 says, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose none of nothing of all that he has given me, but raise him up in the last day. So the issue is going to be because some folks will say, I agree that every last person that the father has given, all that he has given, he says, will come and whoever comes will not cast out. Some will say that that doesn't necessarily mean that um, all those that come were all the ones that were given. In other words, there might be some who come who weren't given. Well, that's it, you can't really get that from this particular passage. And so when you look at verse 44, I think it also makes it clear. Let's drop down to verse 44. And it says that no one can come to me unless the father uh, who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets and they will be all they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the father except he who is from God. He has seen the father. Look what he says. Truly, truly, I say to you. Whoever believes has eternal life. Now, when we also look at verse 65, I think, again, that kind of clarifies. It says, and he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by the father. In other words, you can't come to him unless the father has uh, granted it. So and we've told we're told that all that come to him have been given to him by the father. So the question is going to be, well, what about someone like Judas? Judas was also given. Judas was chosen, but Jesus is not going to raise him up. And so if these disciples, these 12, if they were chosen and given to Jesus, what about Judas? He was chosen and clearly he does not have salvation. So is that an indication that uh, he once had it and then he lost it? There's one passage that kind of muddies up a little bit for some people, uh, though I don't think it ought to be a problem. But let's look at it and let's see if if it says what some say or if we can find out what the true meaning of it is. John chapter 17, verse 12, he says, while I was with them, speaking of the uh, the disciples, he says, I kept them in your name, which you gave, which you have given me. I have guarded them and not one of them has been lost. Here it is, except the son, the son of destruction that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And so some are going to take this as though he's kept them, but he did lose one. Well, that doesn't it still kind of go against what he said. It cannot be that he's lost one, that he had one and he lost one. But he says that he won't he won't lose one, but he'll raise them all up in the last day. So we've got a problem. Can it be possible? How do we reconcile the two or can they be reconciled? Every last one that you've given me, that you've chosen, and you seem to indicate that Judas was chosen and was given. It seems to indicate that, but you lose him or he's lost, but you make the statement, Jesus, that you will raise all of them in the last day. You won't lose any. You will lose none. But you lost Judas. Well, a couple of things. First of all, he did not lose Judas. Judas has never been saved. G Judas has never been uh, cleansed. In John 18, this is where Judas has is coming to betray Jesus, and Jesus speaks about this. In verse 5, he says, they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus said, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with him. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked again, whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 8, I told you that I am he, so so if you seek me, let the me, let these men go. So this was to fulfill the word that he had spoken of those whom you gave me. I have lost none. Now, notice what he says. He's not including Judas. 
Jesus in this statement is not including Jesus, Judas. And so he makes it clear that when he made the statement that all that you that you've given me, I have lost none. He was not referencing Judas. We're going to say that in another passage. But how do we know that? Let's go back to the passage. And I want to show you this. He says, all that you gave me, uh, this is the, the Greek uh, verb. This is from the Greek, uh, didokos, which is in the perfect tense, meaning that they had been given sometime in the past. The perfect tense in Greek is a completed action uh, from the past that has continuous meaning or ramifications. And so all the ones that had been given to him in the past, he says that I have lost none. Now, in this case, he's speaking of uh, the disciples. Now, let's go to John 13, and that will also help us a little bit in this understanding. Chapter 13 of John, verse 10, he, Jesus said to them, the one who has bathed does not need to be, to be washed except for his feet, but he is completely clean. Look what he says, and you are clean, but not every one of you. Now, it will be helpful, and in, in this case, certainly, to look at the Greek. So I want to do that. In verse 10, he says, the one who has been bathed, and here it is again, we talked about the perfect tense a second ago, this is in the perfect tense. So all those who have been luminous, which is all of those who have been bathed, who are now cleansed, um, not they do not need to be washed. So, so Jesus is indicating that these people have already been cleansed. Hmm. Well, what could he possibly mean? We'll get to that in just a second. But he's going to indicate who has not been cleansed. He says, and you are and you are clean, but not every one of you. So who's the not every one of you? Well, some of the someone in this group isn't clean. Well, he's going to tell us for he knew who was to betray him. That's why he said not all of you are clean. It should be clear that Judas was not one of the ones chosen. But then to make it even more clear, let's go to verse 18 and see what it says. He says, I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. And so Judas is, is now he was chosen for the fulfilling of this prophecy, but in terms of being saved and in terms of being uh, eventually one of his apostles and so forth, that was not what he was chosen for. He says, I know who I've chosen. Not all of you have been cleansed. And so he's clearly referencing Judas and separating him from the rest. So no, Judas was not saved. And so we cannot say that when we speak of those who are been chosen and been brought to him, that he won't lose anyone. He means just that. He will not lose not one. Now, the question is going to be, though, when were they saved? When were they cleansed? Because Jesus just says they had been cleansed. And because it's the perfect tense, it is a past action. It's a completed action from the past. When exactly were they cleansed? Well, remember when this is taking place. They are still adhering to the Day of Atonement. These are obviously um, good Jewish men. They are still adhering to uh, the Old Covenant. And Jesus says he did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. Well, the fulfillment of the law in a temporal sense was that their sins would be atoned for and they would be cleansed and be in right standing before God for a period of one year, which they would adhere to. Now, ultimately, they're going to have their, their sins atoned for and they will be permanently cleansed forever once Jesus pays the price on the cross. But as it stands, and there's no reason to think that they, they, they were not adhering to the Day of Atonement, that they were not violating, there's no reason to believe that at all. And so these are men who had their sins atoned for temporarily and now are getting ready to have their sins atoned for permanently and then turn around and spread the gospel, lead other men to do the exact same thing as his apostles. And so my friends, I hope this helps that these are men who had had their sins atoned for. They are waiting for what Christ is going to do so that there'll be some permanency to their atonement. And so I think it's a pretty safe bet to say that they had had their sins atoned for. And then in regards to salvation being permanent, uh, they were chosen. Uh, however, Judas was not.